Nope. Nope. Not doing that one. I mean, I mean, it's absolutely fine, but the shadow it casts is just... Like, it's okay and everything, but... Nah, we can do better. Super Mario RPG was a fever dream of a project. A Squaresoft developed RPG for Nintendo's main franchise that, to this point, had been a fairly mindless romp through obstacle courses with mythology, food, and dinosaur-inspired enemies strewn about. To put it in perspective, the last time that Japan had tried to flesh out the Mario universe to a significant degree was with the 1985 Mario anime movie, and the West was treated to... <sighs> Needless to say, Mario RPG had a lot to establish. What would the tone of the Mario world be? Would it be an everyman traveling through Wonderland? Or perhaps something light or similar to a standard fantasy epic? If there's one thing that Super Mario RPG nailed, it's the light-hearted, tongue-in-cheek tone that would come to define Mario's RPGs and the Mario universe as a whole for years to come. Composer Yoko Shimomura, just coming off of Live a Live, Super Street Fighter 2, and Front Mission, had the difficult task of creating just the right dichotomy of a happy-go-lucky universe paired with the expected standards of RPGs. What we got was one of the most memorable and praised soundtracks on the SNES. And while the battle themes in the game are incredibly catchy, I want to take a step back and admire the incredible environments that Miss Shimamura was able to bring to life. Rose Town is an oft-neglected song among the Mario RPG soundtrack, buried into an early town that Mario only has to encounter once. During Mario's first venture into Rose Town, a different track, here's some weapons, is playing instead, and there's no reason other than two rather obscure and out-of-the-way side quests far later in the game to come back to town. However, no other track really sets the tone of a Mario village quite like this one. There's definitely an element of peace to it, but the score is very heavy on brass and woodwind instruments to give off a relaxed but still kind of upbeat jazz feel. It's able to combine the use of a tuba and high piano notes to let the main instrument shine and give a tone that is so obviously and distinctly Mario. You'll see inspirations of this in later games like the Mario 3D Land series, in which jazz is a predominant element. This track is what I like to consider to be sort of an inspiration, or at least playing off the sort of playful and jazzy ambient tones of Super Mario World's athletic score. Moving on from that, from playfully joyous to playfully sinister, we have And My Name's Booster. Centered around the man-child Viking antagonist of the same name, Booster ends up being what you'd expect of a Mario villain. Brash, over-the-top, goofy, but very playful and childish. The song gives off a smooth jazz feel that I, and several others based on a remix or three I've heard of this song, find it very similar to the stylings you'd find in a Quentin Tarantino film like Pulp Fiction. Everything plods along using a smooth bass line with an instrument sample that almost sounds kind of dirty or poor, kicking things off, which furthers this sleazy and dirty character that matches Booster's outward appearance perfectly. Light string work echoes through both ears nicely, and look, there's just so many great samples working together here, I hardly need to describe it. It's a childish rush of various tones, and it's a joy to listen to. And from jazzy and swanky, we go into the depths of the fiery inferno. Barrel Volcano is a fascinating experiment of just how far a backing track can carry a song. Managing to get a bass line to carry a song, and then seamlessly going into percussion, Barrel Volcano gives a very exploratory feel that does what the best of dungeon themes do, encourage the player to keep pressing forward. It even lives up to the barrel portion of the name. 
Most of the sound samples used in the later parts of the song seem to be ripped straight from Donkey Kong Country, a xylophone used to create this incredible, almost playful contrast. Barrel Volcano is often an area players steamroll through, full of platforming challenges that go by rather quickly, but that's not just because they want to get over it or through it, it's because it is a truly enjoyable, fun, and fast-paced area, and this song is the perfect encouragement and backing to it. There are enough excellent tracks in Super Mario RPG that I could go back and make a second video featuring them all really easily. Its various battle tracks are perfectly catchy even after you've heard them a million times, and its darker scenes are vividly dark, and the soundtrack creates such a great dichotomy from the bouncier offering to the darker and deeper moments of a very weapons and mechanical filled game. I just want to give a brief illustration of what the game could do when not constrained by that j damn Geno song hovering over it. I mean, seriously guys, he's, he's not even that cool. He has this whole holier-than-thou attitude and all these lines, and then he goes, YO SMITHY, like he's going to drop a sick beat, and then Bowser comes in and is the best. Thank you all so much for listening. If you drop us a like and hit that subscription button down there, I would really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Pyrrhic Kong, still chipping away at some tunes.